Stocks are shrugging off the North Korea threat. Samir Samada from Wells Fargo Investment Institute. We had a three-day sell-off last week. And now stocks are back up as if nothing happened. So what is the feeling among investors right now? You know, I think they're focused on what we want them to focus on, right? They're focused on the economy, which is doing pretty well. They're focused on earnings, which are growing again after kind of that soft patch in 2014, 2015. And they're focused on the fact that rates and inflation still remain very low. Mm. So it's sort of the perfect storm for a bull market right now. But is the resilience of this market also due to the rise of ETS? We were talking about that earlier. The market is largely on autopilot mode. You're not seeing these, you know, day-to-day -day reactions sure. to negative events like we used to. Absolutely. You know, investors are getting a little bit smarter. They're getting a little bit more rational, a little bit less emotional. And all of those things are due to the rise of things like robo-advice, due to things like ETFs. Um, that more passive approach does allow investors to take a little bit more of a backseat type approach and let things ride as opposed to overreacting to every event. Mm. But would you advise keeping more of a cash position, especially heading into the next six weeks, which are historically pretty bad times for the markets, just to have some dry powder in case we do get a flash crash or some sort of sell-off? You know, we wouldn't. I mean, for most of our clients, I mean, they're already over-allocated to cash. So what we would say is get that cash put to work. Mm -hmm. And if you have a well-diversified portfolio with stocks and bonds, you know, what you'll notice is those bonds actually do a much better job of kind of being that ballast in the storm as mm -hmm. opposed to cash, which only trades sideways. So within the equity market, I mean, what does your investment thesis look like? Obviously, U.S. stocks have had a great run this mm -hmm. year. Europe, emerging markets. Uh, are there, are there still, is there still room for growth in certain sectors in your view? We think so. So within the U.S., we would focus on large caps as opposed to small caps, which are very expensive. We would focus on cyclical sectors, so think consumer discretionary, financials, industrials, and a little bit of a dark horse pick, healthcare. Um, and then what we would also focus on is Europe, develop Asia, um, and then you know emerging market Asia. All of those are also very attractive opportunities in our opinion. All right, and then in terms of the Federal Reserve, what are their plans for the rest of the year? Because some are saying this North Korea threat could put them on hold, not only on the interest rate side, but also on the balance sheet side for this year. Sure. It'll depend on market reaction, right? I mean, if, if VIX stays below, you know, 15, gets all the way back down to sub 10, you know, what the, uh, the Fed will probably look at is, you know, look, markets are fine. They're not really reacting to the threat, if you will. And so, you know, they also are on autopilot, right? Which means in September, they'll announce something on the balance sheet. We'll start to roll it off. And then December, they'll probably put one more rate hike on the board. Yeah, well, the S&P 500 had about a 1.6% decline last week. So if, if today showed you anything, it was that that was a good buying opportunity. Absolutely. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. Samir yeah. Samana, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Scott.